Welcome back to MBOX Frustrated User Guide. You're watching MXQ Upgrade Secrets Part 3. So what about Kodi 18 Leia? You may have heard that MXQ can't run Kodi 18, but that's not true. You'll need a reboot manager. You'll need a genuine SD card. Anything from 4 gig to 32 gig will work. You'll need a computer with an SD card slot. You'll need to download and install the Libra Elect USB CD creator on that computer. For Kodi 18.6, you'll need to visit Alex Elect at this address. You'll need to translate that page to English using the Google Translate Browser add-on. And because there are so many different MXQ motherboards, you'll need to download all five of the latest Alex Elect S805 images. Unless you've taken apart your MXQ and determined that yours has the exact same S805Q version 2.0 motherboard as mine. In that case, the only S805 image you're going to need from Alex Elect for Kodi 18.6 is the one shown here. Okay, let's see if we can make this disk. Now, your downloads folder should contain all of these files. In most cases, you're not going to know which of these Alex Select images is going to work. Now, we have two with MXQ on them, so if you have an MXQ, that's what I would try first. And I already know, because I've done this before, that the V.31 is the one that's going to work on my motherboard. So let's launch the Libre Elect USB SD Creator. Two clicks to make it go. Yes, you don't have to install this program, it'll launch right from the downloads folder. Now it's already found the SD card that I'm going to use for this. It's a SanDisk 4 gig that'll give us our minimum expectation. That's the smallest card you're going to want to use. Next we have to select the image file that we want to use. So I'll click select file. I'll navigate to the downloads folder. I already know that this one's going to work for me. So I'm going to click on that one. And next we click right. Yes, that's what I wish to do. It's going to get wiped out. That's the idea. Now this process takes a little over one minute. It is 9.54 at the moment. We'll see how long this actually takes. I should be all done by 9.56. That's it. We're all done. It's 9.55, so it took about a minute. So we can close this now. And let's go see if it works. Okay, let's try our first run. Reboot to Libra Elec. Okay. S805 logo. Now if we burn the wrong image, we'll never get off that logo. It'll just hang here forever. The fact that the logo went away, we see Alex Alec. We're good. Now in the upper left corner, this is something that happens the very first time you run your disk. Like all versions of Linux, it's going to check the size of your card and reformat it adding a swap petition so that it can run as fast as possible. Now this process is going to cause it to reboot at least once, possibly twice. That's normal. This only happens the very first time you run the card. Also takes a little longer to boot. That's normal. That didn't take very long, about two minutes. Now because Alex Alec is made in Ukraine, it comes up in Russian. So we've got to 
change the language right away. So we'll go up, go up to settings, click the gear icon, and we'll come down here to interface. And it should be here. This is regional. And we'll come across to Yazik. Click on that. And change to the language we want. Okay. That should be good. Let's see what version of Cody we have. And there it is. Cody 18.6 running on Alex Alec 3.19. Unlike the Cody custom builds, preloaded with add-ons that come with most new Android TV boxes, the version of Kodi you get with Alex Alec is completely empty. It's up to you to install your favorite video add-ons and your favorite program add-ons. How fast do they run? Well, that depends on the speed of your SD card. If it's an old 6 megabyte per second model, then not much faster than Android programs on the embedded multimedia card. But if it's an 80 to 100 megabyte per second SD card, then Kodi runs remarkably fast, something you can easily verify using these two benchmark add-ons from the official Kodi repository. The scores shown here may seem low compared to what the fastest $1,000 PCs can do, but they're actually comparable to what you get on new $25 TV boxes. The user experience is exactly the same, except there are more power menu options in Kodi. Power Off System shuts off the box. Next time, it'll reboot Alex, Alec, and Cody. Reboot to the embedded multimedia card returns you to Android without shutting off the box. Power Off from Android, and next time, it will reboot Android. Unless you connect by wire, you might also have to purchase a Realtek RTL 8188 USB Wi-Fi adapter. Drivers for the embedded SCI Wi-Fi module on my MXQ motherboard don't come with any Alec OS I've tried, so that's what I had to do. I also noticed that the mouse function on my MXQ remote does not work when I'm using Alec OS. It only works in Android, but curiously the trackpads on my wireless keyboards work fine in both OS's. These popular Kodi keyboard shortcuts all work perfectly. Another minor difference has to do with how the MXQ's blue-red on-off indicator LED works. It only turns red when the box is turned off from Android. When the box is turned off using Alec OS, it stays blue. So, is the box on or off right now? And when you reboot to the embedded multimedia card containing Android OS, the on-off button on the remote control doesn't work right away. You either have to wait quite a while, or run at least one Android app to get it working again. On the plus side, Alex Alec has a working OTA update function. When a new version of Kodi is released, check updates and settings and down it comes. And while both analog and digital audio outputs work perfectly, Composite Video Out does not work in any Alec OS I've tried. If that's how you've got your box connected, you'll have to switch to HDMI to run Alex Alec in Kodi 18. Here's a list of key operational differences I've noticed. So what's the verdict? There's no question that Alex Alec Kodi 18.6 works on MXQ, but is it worth the $15 or so that a fast SD card and a USB Wi-Fi adapter are likely to cost you? 
unless you already have this stuff? I'd have to say no. Not when brand new Android 9 TV boxes, with Bluetooth, with wireless AC, with digital clocks, with USB 3, with every Android TV box feature under the sun, only cost about $10 more. No, strictly from a user's point of view, it's not worth it. But many of us are not strictly users. We're intrigued by the technical possibilities. We'll gladly pay the $15 just to acquire these skills. It's amazing to see what you can do with MXQ. Achievement has its own reward. And who can put a price on that? Thanks for watching.